or pool is generally considered to have originated as an outdoor lawn game in Europe around the late 14th or early 15th century. Lawn games played with balls and sticks were generally enjoyed by the nobility, who had the advantage of having huge lawns on which to play such games. The upper class could also move their favorite games inside when winter came. But once inside, bending over to pick up the balls was so tedious that the games were moved up onto tables. The first mention of the indoor game was in 1470, where a list of the household possessions of France's King Louis XIV speaks of billiard balls and a billiard table. While bankrupting France during the building of Versailles, the king enjoyed snookering his friends as well. The word billiard is derived from the French bille or ball. The sticks called maces were used to shove the balls around rather like shuffleboard. The game was played with two balls on a six-pocket table and a hoop not unlike a croquet wicket. Men were allowed to use the straight cue, while women being considered too flighty to be trusted with such a formidable weapon were made to use the mace. Even Mary, Queen of Scots, was said to have passed her long hours awaiting her execution playing billiards in her prison cell. History doesn't tell us if she coined the phrase, being behind the eight ball. <laughs> Shakespeare, in 1600, mentions billiards in Antony and Cleopatra. Cleopatra suggests billiards to her servant Charmaine, but as smart employees have done ever since, Charmaine tells Cleo that her arm is too sore to play, thus not risking beating the boss. By the 1700s, the table was dressed with green cloth to remind players of the grassy plains and the great outdoors. Unfortunately, a long period of smoky, crowdy pool halls came and went. Thus, this verdant allusion to nature has since escaped us. Pool was also considered by some to be a genteel way to pass the time. In fact, the ladies of the day in the early 1800s were invited to attend the finer public billiard rooms in an attempt to better display their charms. Men soon learned that women too could master the game. By the mid-18th century, the extra hoops and sticks had disappeared. In 1823, a French political prisoner, Captain Mingot, invented the leather cue tip. This innovation allowed the player to make the cue ball spin and have greater accuracy over the game. Being a perfectionist, Mingot asked for more prison time to further develop his invention and his game. At roughly the same time, Jack Carr, an employee of a billiard room in Bath, England, made a startling discovery. Rubbing the leather tip with chalk seemed to impart magical powers to his cue and to his game. Onlooker said he put an English on the ball. Thus is the origin of the billiard term, not to be confused with a popular breakfast item, the English muffin. Billiards then came to America. George Washington was said to be a fan of the game. He probably crossed the Delaware on occasions to attend a billiard game or two. Our sixth president, John Quincy Adams, was also a pool enthusiast. In fact, his request for a billiard table for the White House created loud criticism from others on Capitol Hill, bemoaning the incredible extravagance of such a lowly pastime. Billiard Gate, circa 1825. The great French general, Napoleon Bonaparte, was also a pool fan. He played a game or two during his exile in St. Helena, where he probably tried to hustle his guards the way he hustled most of Europe. Small innovations appeared throughout the 1800s, such as the two-piece queue in 1829 and the slate table bed in 1835. The modern billiard table was developed shortly after Goodyear first vulcanized rubber in 1839, and the invention of the celluloid billiard ball came in 1868, revolutionizing the billiards industry. The only drawback to the new balls was that they had a tendency to explode on impact. And even the game of pool has its ambassador. Enter Irish emigre, Michael Fellon. In 1859, he won a prize match with a purse of $15,000, an astronomical amount for the time. Now, with this money, he established a table manufacturing company that exists to this day, the Brunswick Corporation. By the turn of the century, billiards competitions were international affairs, drawing established celebrities from around the globe. Mark Twain used to frequent these competitions and was an avid pool player himself, not to mention a fairly decent writer. The ballyhoo and flapper extravagance of the 1920s infected pool as well as the rest of the world. Publicity stunts were commonplace. 
the champion Ralph Greenleaf thought it would be a hoot to shoot a game of eight ball from the air. I hope he doesn't scratch. Hollywood movie stars were also pool aficionados, both on and off the screen. W.C. Fields hustled pool in his vaudeville days, and the Three Stooges were found sticking around a pool table occasionally as well. Oh, sweeten me. By the time of the Great Depression, polite society began to lose interest. Pool was considered a lower-class pastime. Then, in the 1960s, Paul experienced a revival with the movie The Hustler. Paul Newman played fast Eddie Felsen, a cocky young player, and Jackie Gleason was Minnesota Fats, the master. The 1986 sequel, The Color of Money, with Tom Cruise and Paul Newman, gave the game another boost in popularity. Today, pool is considered a professional sport, as well as a good way to pass the time with friends. Some of the best-known figures of the sport come to us through their championship and commercial exposure. Rudolf Wanderone, better known as Minnesota Fats, had a popular TV show called Celebrity Billiards, in which other greats showed up and showed off. Willie Moscone, a Hall of Fame member, began to dominate the game in 1941 and for 15 years thereafter defended his crown. Machine gun Lou Butera is best known for his rapid-fire style of play. In 1973, he ran 150 balls in just under 21 minutes. That same year, he won his first world championship. Women have a place in the Hall of Fame as well. Jean Baluka started competing when she was seven years old. Former Swedish model Iwa Mataya won the US Open title in 1988, and Laureen John Jones began as an 11 year old and has stayed on top ever since. The world of billiards is open to all. See if you can't become one of the greats. Hi, my name is Machine Gun Lou Butera. I'm a former World Pool Champion, a member of the Billiard Congress of America Hall of Fame, and I'm going to demonstrate how I got my nickname Machine Gun Lou by running a rack of balls in less than a minute and 30 seconds. An aiming technique that I use is taking the tip of the cue through the center of the pocket, drawing an imaginary line back through the center of the object ball, picking a contact point on One of the most important shots in pool is a center ball hit and being able to hit it when you have to. And a good exercise for this is to shoot this cue ball over the spot and have it come back off the rail. In order to make the cue ball follow the same path as the object ball, when shooting the draw shot, you want to keep the cue stick as low and level and remember to follow through.
using the same angle on all three balls here, the one, two, and three, I will show you the effect. Aiming a combination is almost like aiming a single ball. In playing kiss shots, you have to determine where the perpendicular line is. In playing kiss shots, you have to determine where the perpendicular line is. The five ball is aimed to this side rail. Coming over here to the center of the pocket, you would find your perpendicular line is between the two balls. Therefore, by hitting the three ball on the right-hand side, it should kiss off the five. In playing kiss shot, This is a carom shot where I am playing the 14 ball off the 3 ball into the corner pocket. When the balls are frozen as the 10 and 14 are and aimed in a straight line like this, what you can do is... Hi, my name is Machine Gun Lubutera. I'm a former world pool champion. When you think there's no way out of a shot, try shooting against the point. You might be surprised by the action of the cue ball. Let's see what happens here. Oh, my God. Shooting a cue ball into the one ball with low right hand spin, having the one ball kick it back to this rail, and back towards the nine ball. Okay, on this particular shot, I'm going to shoot the cue ball into this corner pocket, the one ball into this corner pocket, two ball into this corner pocket, and the three ball will stay exactly where it's at. Okay, hitting the cue ball high to the one ball, having the one ball kick the cue ball back to the two, and then have the cue ball come back again, make three in the corner pocket. One ball left hand corner pocket, cue ball hits this rail, goes around the eight and makes two ball. Take shot, a lot of people pass this shot up because they don't know about it. The idea here is to hit the eight very thin. As it pushes the nine out, the cue ball goes across, catches the nine into the corner pocket. One ball, time shot in the side pocket. That's it.
Double kiss bank, eight ball in the corner pocket. One ball, left-hand corner pocket, cue ball hits this rail, goes around the eight and makes two ball.